The Islamic garden as a concept is a place that is clearly inspired by the revelation of the Quran. One of the words for paradise in the Quran is the garden, al-Jannah. This garden uh, is described in the Quran as being green, as having trees and fruits, but also shade and more importantly, running water, fountains and rivers. The idea of the gardens was always a central and really, really important part of the concept for both of these buildings um, by the Aga Khan Development Network here at King's Cross. Part of the very original idea for the Aga Khan Centre and for other buildings, Victoria Hall nearby, was to embed outdoor spaces into the buildings and to make these spaces at different scales, in different locations and at different sizes. So at the Aga Khan Centre, the six gardens here have been incorporated by the architect Mackie and Associates. In our survey of Islamic gardens and the research we did, it was exactly the way His Highness had explained it in his initial paper, and, and that is variety. And the variety coming from purpose, variety coming from region, uh, variety come from the design itself. In the project here at King's Cross, it's not a single story building. Uh, we have 10 levels. So uh, we thought, wouldn't it be wonderful if we had taken six gardens and have them travel up the building, almost like hanging gardens. The building is organized vertically around different programs. So uh, we created a big courtyard for the classroom section. We created another one, uh, facing the libraries and then we created another one around the offices and at the top of the building uh, we were able to capitalize having magnificent sun uh, exposure of having three uh, fantastic different gardens at the top of the roof It was very important that uh, these gardens represent uh, different uh, parts of the Muslim world. When we talk about uh, gardens uh, in Islamic architecture and culture, there's always water, moving water, the, the sounds created by water, the reflections created by water, and it's the spring of life. Another way is light. We have north-facing gardens, we have south-facing gardens, we have shaded gardens, and the way light interacts creates shadow. And that's how uh, these gardens were interacting with nature in many dimensions. Many of the Islamic gardens, although they are called gardens, are actual outdoor rooms. So when you say garden, uh, one might imagine luscious landscape, trees, uh, maybe water, but a lot of these uh, in the uh, examples of the architecture are open air rooms, uh, which are extensions uh, of the interior spaces, kind of blurring the boundary between inside and outside. We have this a very intimate uh, small garden called the Yuan, modeled uh, after the Syrian courtyard. And the characteristic of that is there's always a hidden message. And what we have on the floor is a Kufi scripture that uh, we've uh, interpreted from Islamic text. And the floor actually says beauty and harmony. It is called the uh, Courtyard of Harmony. This is the Garden of Life and it has actually exposed views, west and north exposures to the cityscape. The idea was that it'd be a garden that's not just tactile, but also there's a notion of the student can snitch a strawberry or the visiting professor can have a meddler or something. So it's the idea of creating a, a garden that's um, shared in that sense. In all Mughal gardens, the shadow or the water feature which is a very key element, the source of life, water. Uh, we've used the same material as you'd find in Mughal gardens, which would be the, the white carved marble plaques. By using those materials that were sourced in India, 
uh, plus the plant material also makes reference to Asia, from Mesopotamia all the way to India and China. The trees are uh, Persian ironwood, the medlar, the quince, the hazelnut. All fruit trees are, are nut-bearing trees. This is the area where uh, the community working within the Aga Khan Center would come and congregate. And so it's a space where there will be students, professors, employees of the center. There'll be a um, mixing of worlds. This building is a building of learning, an institution of education. So I hope that the, the stresses of education and studying, etc., this will be a place where students will come, uh, chat amongst themselves, read a book on their own, uh, study, or, or have a moment of escape. The Aga Khan's His Highnesses wanted to have this inspiration of these different types of Islamic gardens here within the center so that the general public and students would be much more aware of, of that vocabulary within the realm of garden design. This garden is very unusual in that it uses some of the iconic elements of the Islamic garden, but it uses them very modestly. So there is water, but there's a very small basin and a quiet fountain. All of the screen panels are really meant to capture the light. Each piece of the garden, each element, is very modest, very quiet, but um, still evokes the essence of the Islamic garden. In the Garden of Light, in particular, we have, we have inscriptions that add a new element to the garden. You don't even need to know what the inscriptions say to know that there is something magical about them. The letters are highly stylized. They come from a long venerable tradition of hand calligraphy. They add a ribbon that unites the whole garden together. In these inscriptions, we have some verses from the Quran which talk about water being a gift from the divine. The Islamic garden is uh, not only a symbol, but also a reminder. Nature is a gift, but it's also a responsibility for humans. London is a multicultural city. It made sense to create connections Transitioning from the public space that you encounter when you come out of King's Cross and St. Pancras stations and you walk towards Lewis Cubitt Square and the Lewis Cubitt Park at the end, and then you encounter the Aga Khan Center. So this ribbon pathway of gardens, terraces and other green spaces connects the public sphere through the Aga Khan Center, which contains six gardens, to the two other gardens that are located in the student accommodation of Victoria Hall. I think in, in all environments, all urban environments, in every building, if, I mean, bringing nature in and, and, and giving a small place for, for people to reconnect a little bit with nature and, and bringing some garden component is very important because People are in desperate need, especially in cities, and we're, you know, we're building more and more and losing more and more green space. So it, it, it becomes very, very important to do it properly and, 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 and hope that people value it and appreciate it and they can somehow eventually help in you know, protecting and conserving other places that, that we are chopping very quickly. I think that every visitor to these gardens will want to invite their friends because these are just beautiful spaces for contemplation and reflection like any beautiful garden would be. In this case, the connection is to Islamic cultures and civilizations. And so there's an added educational aspect. There is a message behind that His Highness the Aga Khan would like to put out in the public sphere 
which is a message of peace, a message of invitation, a message of bridge building, a message of humanistic, open and cosmopolitan ethic that Islam embraces together with everybody else.